Hi everyone, I'm Jenny V. Fine, the editor of WWD Beauty Inc. and associate editor of WWD. And I'm here with Hannah Bronfman, um, a multifaceted entrepreneur, DJ, and what we at WWD like to call an it girl. Um, Hannah is joining us during the middle of Fashion Week, which is a very, very busy time for everyone. So first I just want to say thank you so much for being here. Well, thank you so much for having me. I'm thrilled to be here and talk all things beauty. Great. Well, usually, Hannah, you're a behind-the-scenes person, but this season you took a turn on the runway. Can you tell us about that? I did. I was so nervous. I walked on. Um, I walked in the DKNY show this mm -hmm. season, and they were casting real people. So um, I had a meeting with the Donna Karen team, and they ended up casting me in the show. And I didn't realize how nervous I actually was, um, but I was very nervous, and I was just very thankful that I didn't fall on my face. <laughs> what was the backstage scene like? Um, the backstage scene was really awesome. The hair was done by Wella and the makeup was done by Maybelline. And um, they kind of let us take a little bit of a creative uh, turn there because they kind of wanted our personalities to come through in the hair and makeup. So I spoke with my makeup artist about the look that I wanted to you know, convey and he ended up giving me a bold matte red lip, which was I thought oh, was great. Amazing. Yeah. And what's it? What was it like walking down the runway and facing that wall of photographers? Is are the flashes blinding? They're blinding, but at the same time, I honestly can't even remember anything that was going through my head at the at the moment. Um, once you literally make that turn and you're walking down that immediate middle because it was kind of an intense walk we were walking like all around we did like three different aisles mm -hmm. um, but that one main aisle was definitely a, like a just it was one of those moments where if I wish I had my cell phone and I could have whipped out and <laughs> taken a photo of all the photographers taking photos of me which was crazy but so um, strangely amazing one of those life boxes that I definitely checked uh, and what have been some other highlights of the week for you um, I went to the Jason Wu show, which was amazing. Um, I had never been before, and he's really, really talented, and I was really excited um, by that. And the stage presence was beautiful. The set um, he created was really cool. Um, and the hair and makeup were really simple um, and feminine, but very powerful at the same time. Um, and a little bit you know, the clothes were a little bit masculine um, in terms of like the over jackets. It was kind of like a, almost like a power woman situation and the, the beauty was um, very light in the face, which was a very perfect um, pairing, I thought. Mm. So clearly you're an, a beauty aficionado and you talked about whipping out your phone before and one of your projects really marries your love of beauty and technology. You created an app called Beautified. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, absolutely. So Beautified is a way to book last minute beauty appointments through a curated list of salon and spas. Um, it's a free app and we're only on um, Apple right now, but we will be going to Android soon. Um, so basically, you know, myself and my two co-founders, Annie Evans and Peter Hananel, um, came together from different places. Um, you know, Annie and I really came from a consumer place where we found that there was actually nothing, there was no product out there like what we've created with Right, Beautified. like if you're in Soho and you need a last minute blowout. Totally. Uh, what have been, what are the most popular services that are being booked on the app? Well, we offer nine services. So we offer haircuts, blowouts, manicures, pedicures, eyebrow wax, bikini wax, facials, massage, and Which makeup. All sound great right now. <laughs> right. I know. This cold weather is definitely leaving me wanting to get pampered. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it's funny because there is a bit of seasonality when it comes to the appointments that are being booked. Um, over the summer, we had... Brazilian um, mm -hmm. bikini waxes through the roof. Makes a lot of sense. Right, and um, right now we're actually seeing a lot of facials and haircuts. So I think it just um, depends and, you know, it's interesting to look at the consumer behavior and kind of hone in on those uh, trends that are happening and kind of refine our product to mm -hmm. ultimately anticipate what you'll be needing. And what has surprised you the most about the consumer reaction to it or the way that consumers are using it? You know, um, right now it's it's amazing how you can go to market with a product and your consumer can really tell you everything about how you need to fix it. Mm -hmm. um, so right now we're seeing a lot of 
repeat bookings from the same users. So we only allow you to book one appointment at a time, which is a feature that we are updating so that you can, you know, have many different things all in one checkout. So you could book like a, a blowout and a manicure at the same time, which is something you can't do now. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And you can have it actually be at the same time or one after the other, but the, the functionality of having two appointments in one checkout is not there yet. But we were seeing a lot of users actually book their haircut, then go back, book their manicure, and then go back and book their makeup all for the afternoon, you know, right after each other. So, you know, we're definitely seeing that we are um, an in-demand beauty pro a beauty service, pro you know, app that people are really using um, to their advantage and making their lives more simple. Um, it is a last minute booking, so you're actually booking an appointment for today, and you can book for tomorrow after 6 p.m. tonight. Um, and are you only in New York, or have you expanded to other cities yet? We're in New York, LA, and San Francisco. Wow, that's fantastic. Yeah, which is really exciting. And we will be expanding to other cities in late 2014. And what's it like getting to know the tech world? And do tech people have any commonalities with mm -hmm. fashion people? Um, I think, actually, you know, in college, I studied a bit of computer um, classes, and I was I'm able to speak to our tech team a little bit. My business partner, Peter, is the real one who oversees our tech team. But um, it's funny because, you know, you're saying all these things about how the functionality should work regarding, you know, getting your nails done and mm -hmm. um, Brazilian waxes. And <laughs> um, it's pretty awesome. I think that, you know, our tech team especially is really appreciative of um, what we're doing, and they're, you know, really excited to be a part of a, you know, a really cool s startup. And we're still a really small team, which is, um, you know, a great experience for anyone coming into the startup world. And the tech world in general is pretty amazing. I've met some really awesome people. Mm -hmm. um, you know, really just trying to meet as many people as possible and hear as many, um, you know, scenarios that other people have gone through to really kind of understand and wrap my head around things that will come up. Um, you know, they it's a roller coaster when you start your own company. Mm -hmm. um, there are a lot of things that you don't anticipate happening uh, that you kind of just need to figure out on the go. And I'm really lucky that I have two amazing co-founders and we're able to talk about um, certain scenarios and, you know, plan for them. And, you know, the three of us work really well together. So it's, it's, if I was doing this on my own, I, I don't think um, I would be as successful. I definitely think um, it's the power of three that really got us off the ground. That's interesting, and the ability to be really agile and nimble. Yes, absolutely. Um, on a more personal level, how would you define your beauty philosophy? Um, I think beauty really stems from within. Um, I think, obviously... I'm a big advocate of healthy eating. I think that that's been a lot for me in terms of turning my skin around. I got out of college and I went through a bad breakup and I was just, my skin was just not what it used to be and I didn't really understand why and then, you know, as I got less stressed, it still didn't go away. So I really started eat, changing my diet and eating really clean and mm -hmm. it really helped my skin clear up and I just kind of think that that's a really good beauty philosophy is kind of you are what you eat. Mm -hmm. And... Um, so that's kind of what I'm about. Right? And product-wise, are you high maintenance, low maintenance? Do you fall somewhere in between? I think I fall somewhere in between. My boyfriend would say that I'm absolutely high maintenance when it comes to <laughs> products. <all> do. <laughs> because I have so many products, it's crazy. Mm -hmm. But that's just because I really like the variety. I mean, in terms of what actual things I'm putting on my face, I just wear some blush and mascara and lipstick. But... I have maybe 50 lipstick shades. Right. When you, you know, know like I just, shot, yeah, exactly. 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 So um, in terms of my beauty looks, I think that I'm pretty low maintenance. I don't use um, that many products, and I do try to stay as um, ethically green and organic as possible, but obviously that's really difficult, and I still think that there is a little bit of a void in the market when it comes to something that's really strong in pigment, but also not toxic, so. Um, so, you know, you're, you're entrepreneurially minded. <laughs> Are you, do you think that you would ever start a product line one day? Could you see yourself going from the service side of the business to the product side? Anything is possible. We're breaking news yeah. here. <laughs> <laughs> Anything is possible, I think. Um, you know, 
entering the world of beauty has definitely been really eye-opening and super exciting and very intriguing um, from do lots of different places. So um, obviously Beautified's number one um, and in terms of all the other things I've got going on, time management is always an issue. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, I am still, you know, in my 20s I would definitely love to, you know, broaden my horizons outside of um, the tech world as it goes to beauty. So, mm -hmm. Well, I wanted to ask you, how do you achieve a balance in your life? Because you really are involved with quite a few different projects, and um, that can't be easy. Um, you know, I think I, time management in general is something that's very difficult and one that I, I, I have not yet uh, learned properly, but uh, I'm, seems like you're doing a pretty uh, good job. I'm trying to, for sure. Um, but definitely, um, I I DJ, so I I keep all of my DJ gigs to after work hours. So mm -hmm. I normally start DJing at around 6 p.m. or something at 9 p.m. or maybe it's a after party or something. So that definitely helps with having my day focused, um, like around beautified. And honestly. I think that as long as you have a clear mind, you're able and like able to get most of your things done. So I try to go to the gym almost every morning because to me that really just puts my mindset in a very clear place, and I'm able to kind of see what's going on on a you know mm -hmm. on a large scale. Okay, so Hannah, how many hours do you sleep a night? <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. I, I try to get at least seven hours of sleep a night. I really do. Yeah, and do. you have like three nights a week. Are you successful at that? You just about. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, just about. And so my final question before we wrap it up is what does style mean to you? How would you define your personal style and who really personifies style for you? Um, I'd have to say my mother really personifies um, style. She is very eccentric and eclectic and um, I grew up you know, with her wearing crazy purple furs and large hats, mm -hmm. and um, she really was completely herself throughout her entire style um, file, I should say. Um, and uh, I think my style um, is still changing and evolving, but um, this idea of individuality. Yeah, I really, um, I really don't try to put myself too much in a box. I think I'm. I like to try new things out. I feel like I um, dress for my body type, and I definitely dress um, more comfortably. Mm -hmm. And I'm not really into like overtly, I don't know, like sexual outfits. Like I'm not into like a really short skirt or like a really low top. Right. Um, but you know. That's just me. Super cute, super yeah. chic, super stylish. Oh, thank you. Well, Hannah, thank you so much for being with thank us today. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you.